welcome to another episode of True to Chair, a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the committee chairpersons that make up the 35th Legislature Committee structure. Joining us today is no other than Senator Maurice C. James, who is the chair of the Committee on Education and Workforce Development. Welcome, Senator. Thank you. How Thank are you, you doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. You too. So let's start. Um, who are some of the members of the Committee on Education and Workforce Development? The other members are beginning with, of course, the vice chair, the mm -hmm. Senator Donna Fred Gregory, mm -hmm. and then Senator Dwayne DeGraff, Senator Carla Joseph, Senator Diane Capehart, Senator Franklin Johnson, mm -hmm. and Senator Javan James. Okay, that's a diverse set of senators. It is. This should be interesting. It will. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So let's talk about your committee responsibilities. So what are so, some of the things the committee will be responsible for moving forward in the 35th legislature? Well, the committee is responsible for everything education, mm. you know, from when we're children to adults, mm -hmm. really, which captures, of course, the Department of Education and the Department of Labor mm -hmm. because their workforce development. But it all begins with our children. So the focus is the children of the Virgin Islands, mm -hmm. making sure that they're ready to enter the workforce. Right. And the, the committee will be dealing with any bills related to teachers, mm -hmm. um, the, of course, children in, in elementary, well, we should really start with pre-K, right. pre-K all the way to college, right. because it will address even the University of the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, of course, our alternative education with respect to workforce development, that has to do a lot with the training, the labor issues that would arise right. um, with our workforce, anything that has to do with that. So it, it really captures us from um, us as people from the time we're children all the way to when we are ready for our careers regardless of whether it's college or trade or even the military right. any any of those areas where we then function as adults in in the in our society and times are changing right now we mm -hmm. we're in a different time so everything has to change the way we, we teach our kids the way they yes. can conversate about them we have social media so that's um very important yes. as far as yes, i see it, it. Is. so share your thoughts about um how the legislature has a structure about education and workforce development. And so we have like different committees that deal with different things. So show your thoughts about how the legislature actually gets the committee of education to, to hold that responsibility. Well, you mean in terms of what we're going to be doing as, as, a, as, as a body? As a and, body. Right. And then, mm. Well, of course, any bills that come before us mm -hmm. that, that deal with any of the, the um, matters that touch on education or workforce development, right. um, we will be handling, you know, we're, we'll be looking forward to, um, I would, as um, I should say, uh, I will, as the chairman of the committee really be focusing on how are we going to in, increase the, the scores of our children. I mm -hmm. think that's perhaps the one thing that has come out during the election and mm -hmm. since the pandemic. Right. You know, we keep hearing those buzzwords, learning loss. Right. Of course, at the same time too, we're actually now, and the legislature definitely has oversight over what's going to be happening with the building of the schools. Mm -hmm. and. The Office of Disaster Recovery will touch on that mm -hmm. because, of course, federal they are money, responsible right. for the federal funds coming in. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the Education Committee needs to make sure that the buildings are conducive for learning, yeah. that um, our children are protected, our teachers are also in a place where learning can occur. Right. Um, workforce development. We, you know, we'll be focusing on one of the big issues really now, um, I think that was touched upon by the governor in his state of the territory, was the fact that we don't have the workforce, right. the number mm -hmm. of people. So I'm looking forward in the, the next m few months really, right. because construction is going to begin, mm -hmm. for example, on Arthur Richards. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing how are we going to meet the needs of construction, right? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the number of people on the island. Right. The governor said he needs like 5,000 more people. Right. 
Well, I'm hoping that the Department of Labor mm -hmm. specifically mm -hmm. is coming up with solutions right. because that's why we're elected. Right to solve the problems. Right. And that seems to be now one of the major issues major. that we're going to be facing in the next few months, really. Right, and that was you one know? of my next question. What, what will your plans <laughs> be in the next 100 days? Because some of this is critical. It's, it is, you know, yeah. We know that we have the money, but then we need people to work. Right, the, the, the next 100 days, well, I've already begun. Okay. For example, I was um, part of the panel that was sitting listening to the principals present the status of their schools to the commissioner of education mm -hmm. uh, she'll be sworn in soon so right. I, mm -hmm. I i'll take the liberty and say the commissioner right mm -hmm. um but um she invited me commissioner deanne wells hedrington to sit in on the principal presentation so all last week mm -hmm. i spent listening to all the principals and all and St. Thomas, mm -hmm. St. John, St. Croix, mm -hmm. and um, I was really heartened by the quality of the principals mm -hmm. who presented. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't have, um, or I don't, I should say, speaking for myself, mm -hmm. I don't think we have a, um, any, any need to be concerned about the quality of the principals that we have. Right. Um, just from the presentations, of course, right? right? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have issues with certification of teachers. Mm -hmm. We need to encourage more teachers to become certified. Mm -hmm. You know, someone once said that if you want to look at the, the, if you want to determine the quality of your education, look at the quality of your teachers. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, right. Mm -hmm. And so the focus was on the English proficiency mm -hmm. and math proficiency of our students. Mm -hmm. They're not good. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we need to do in the VA is accept the fact that we do have a problem right. and that it needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at uh, creative ways for us to improve the, the reading scores, the math scores of our, our children. So I did that for the first, last week into the beginning of this week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eventually meet with each school individually. Mm -hmm. Uh, take a tour, mm -hmm. uh, maybe as part of a group or maybe individually. I haven't decided on that yet. Um, mm -hmm. I need to meet with the committee members, of course, to mm -hmm. find out from them exactly what, what they tell us already. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, mm -hmm. and get their input. Right. A few of them participated, and um, Senator Diane Capehart, Senator um, Franklin Johnson, they both came to, and, and Senator Javan James, he was our file but he sent a representative. Mm -hmm. And of course, Senator Gittins joined us one day. Mm -hmm. um, Senator Gittins seemed to like coming in and, and coming in and in my yes. staff, you know, I need to talk to him about that. But, <laughs> but I was happy that he came, Great. you know, because he added, you know, Senator um, Gittins added the, um, the perspective mm -hmm. of a police officer. Definitely. I was right? just about to say that. I yeah. was just about to say that. And mm -hmm. his focus was clearly on the security. Right. And the safety. Right. That's and why we course, need other yes. minds to right. Yeah, right. yeah. It's important that Collectively. they come. Right. Because for me as a former teacher, mm -hmm. my focus is really uh, in the classroom. Right. And right. what's going on in the classroom. But there's so much other elements that has to do with that. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of, of having all these different people in the Senate that right. people don't sometimes realize. You need different perspectives. Right. You know, I mm -hmm. bring not only the fact that I was a teacher, and I still consider myself a teacher, but I'm an attorney. Right. And um, so for me, I'm looking at the purpose of the legislature is to create legislation. Right. And as an attorney, I bring that to the to the Senate mm -hmm. without having been needing needed to be sitting in the Senate because mm -hmm. as a practicing attorney I know how important mm -hmm. laws are. Right, definitely. You know, and mm -hmm. the consequences of making sure you have good legislation. Right. And uh, legislation that's understandable to the society we live in, to the citizens, you right. know. So and then Franklin Johnson he, he was focused also on um, Security, security and right. safety. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was good. It was good because, like I just said, you know, they they bring a perspective, right. um, and that went well. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the commissioner sworn in, mm -hmm. and but I think she's hit the ground running. Right. I mm -hmm. also participated in the um, the CZM hearing that they was held a few days ago. Mm -hmm. um, 
Samuel Carrion was also in that particular hearing, and um, it was for Arthur Richard's school. Mm -hmm. And that's going to break ground right. in February. I'm looking happy forward about to that. Looking forward to it. Looking and forward to it. It's supposed to be finished by 2025. Okay. So that's important. Right. But while the schools are building, our children still need to learn. Right. They've got to find some place to learn. Right. 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 I'm yeah. telling you. And so that's been my focus. Okay. So who? Um, I know you mentioned a lot about education. Let's talk more about um, workforce development. And Department of Labor, which would be in charge of that. So, yeah, who, um, yeah. how about conversations do you have with the um, with Department of Labor so far? Well, actually, you know, what's great about uh, the Department of Labor, the Commission on the Department of Labor, who I, I'm glad you, you brought him up, he participated in the presentations, right. some mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. for education. It mm -hmm. makes sense. Right, it does make sense. You know, right. but also because of his background, if you think about it, he was also an educator, in the, in, uh, mm -hmm. educator mm -hmm. and a principal superintendent. Right. He mm -hmm. went through. So he also brings both of those. And um, again, the issues with him would be people taking advantage of the programs that he has right. in, in his department, mm -hmm. letting the public know what's available. Mm -hmm. He also will play a part, a big part, in the workforce Right. Uh, problem right. or issue. Right. How are we going to solve that? Right. And also what what um, laws we would have to follow if we're bringing in people from, let's say, an, another country. Right. Okay, right. And I think we did. Have we done we've done that before? We have we, done that before. I think we have. That's, right. that's one of the other things that I've been doing since coming into the Senate is doing a lot of research and how did we solve these issues before? Right. You know, like for example, the night of the um, the state of the territory address. Remember, the the governor honored the two teachers, right. and one of the teachers was from the Philippines. Right. So clearly, there's a program mm -hmm. in place to bring teachers from the Philippines in international right. teachers. Right. So we need to think about bringing international. Workers, workers in terms of construction, healthcare, right? Everything, everything, everything to be honest, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that's where the Commissioner of Labor plays a pivotal role, right. you know, in right. in um, advising us as as senators how he will solve that problem or assist the governor in solving that problem because right. that's an executive branch issue. But we come into it, of course, when it comes to rules and regs and laws dealing with. Um, these people who will be coming in as well as the workers we have right, right, you know right. so um the the statute or the or i should say the 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 committee is also tasked with looking at other issues in labor you know like unemployment mm -hmm. um uh, the collective bargaining agreements mm -hmm. retirement mm -hmm. those issues so right. I'll eventually get to those. <laughs> right, right. Well, you, like, you hit the ground running, so we're yes. good. So, what are your, what are some of your other plans? Um, you see, what are you, how are you gonna plan to carry out some of these um, meetings? And like, it sounds like it's a, it's a lot already. It sounds like it's a real lot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it turned out to be a, a, a lot more um, than. I anticipated mm -hmm. at the very beginning, but mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yes, it does. Uh, I. I'm also getting emails from constituents mm -hmm. that are inquiring about about different issues in education, like right. the agriculture curriculum, and I and I welcome those. My only my only concern sometimes is that I may not be as responsive as as. I ex want to be, right. mm -hmm. but I'm only human, right. Mm -hmm. right? right? So I have to get used to that. Right. Okay. I have to, to get used to that. Like you said, I hit it running and I am running. Right. Um, so there are a lot of other, other uh, issues that, for example, I actually ran on a platform of housing and health. Right. And I'm the vice chair of the committee on housing right. that's chaired by Senator Blyden, right. Marvin mm -hmm. Blyden. Mm -hmm. so, I'm going to get involved in that in that too. Right. Uh, and then I'm also a veteran, mm -hmm. and so I attended a meeting that was held <laughs> this past week. Mm -hmm. like, and this is only this is all in the month of January, right? right. And, uh, that, that we just had uh, dealing with veterans' issues. Right. You know, and they're dear to my heart, so I intend to definitely, definitely. They, stay they focused. They deserve the veterans for a reason, so they right. deserve it. Yeah. All the attention that they could possibly get. Yeah. Just as much as they have the children that we do and we talk about. 
So um, what about um, your long-term plans as a, as a senator or long-term plans for the Committee on Education? Well, I'm hoping that we pass meaningful legislation mm -hmm. that will correct some of the problems that I'm beginning to hear from constituents, mm -hmm. from teachers, from principals, from the Board of Education. Right. I mean, I don't want to forget too that the Board of Education was also part of, they attended the presentations and again to- Right, a role. right a role. they mm -hmm. also provided a perspective that I found enlightening mm -hmm. to me. Right. Um, you know, and then there's a technical board that I hope, eventually hope to meet with. Mm -hmm. um, so, my, my plans really are, for the committee, we learn as much as we can about the status of education. We, you know, from holding meetings mm -hmm. um, and inviting the, the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, we also pass meaningful legislation that will address some of the, the problems that are existing now in our community. Right. And um, that hopefully by the end of the two years, mm -hmm. Um, the first two years in, in that the people have given me the opportunity to serve them, mm -hmm. they will see a difference right. in education, Good. you know, mm -hmm. because um, there's just so much right. It's a big department, do. right? Yes. And so much of grounds to cover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So does this, um, as your role as committee chair, does this hamper your other roles as being a senator though? Because this is, like I say, it's a big committee, big education, but then you're still a part of other committees as well. Does it hamper it? Uh, no. Well, it, it interferes with it a right. little bit, mm -hmm. I agree, mm -hmm. with, from that viewpoint. But I have an excellent staff, well, you well, know. Right. I was fortunate to, to have people who were in the Senate, mm -hmm. you know, Mrs. Glory V. Christian Krieger, mm -hmm. Ms. Ms. Diafra Payne. So they have been guiding yes. me, you yes. know. In the process, and then I have two new em two new employees, uh, Mr. Joel Mercado and Miss Juanita Phillip, mm -hmm. and they bring that outside perspective. Never been in before, right. but have a lot of questions like I do. Yes, yes. And um, so, I'll find a way to manage it. You know, I have to. One of my advisors said to me, "You need to pace yourself, mm -hmm. Maurice. Mm -hmm. You're moving a little too mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have to learn to do that. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yes. and get ready for. I mean, think about it. If there's a hearing on veterans um, in the territory, I'm going to attend. Right. So I need to prepare for that. Right. I need to look at that legislation. Right. I think that's where." I have an advantage over all the other senators. Mm -hmm. they, they may call me new, right? right? But um, I consider myself like Michael Jordan mm -hmm. and LeBron James. Mm -hmm. When From the time they were rookies, mm -hmm. they were making a difference. That's right. Right? right. Okay, so I look at myself that <laughs> yes, way. Yes, yes. And part of that is because you, you bring <laughs> skills that you had from before. Right. And um, so I intend to bring my my experience, my knowledge, you know, my training, my skills as an attorney um, to the legislature and and I look I really look forward to so far I've been really uh, I guess the word would be pleased mm -hmm. with the environment okay. that I've met the people right. the central staff on both islands yes. um, you know you begin to see the workings of the legislature. How it works, right, and from behind the it, scenes. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and people don't realize yes. <laughs> how important all these other people are mm -hmm. to making this branch of government work. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've, I, feel, I feel good right. about the people I'm working with right. in terms of the central staff. I still have to meet the staff of the individual senators, but right. the central staff have been yeah, already okay. exposed to them. Good, good. And uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about, about them helping me become a better senator. Good. Yeah. Good. And that's what, that's what we're here for. We yes. want to make sure that you get the best treatment you could possibly get so you could go out and do the best job you could do to the people of the Virgin Islands. Exactly. Is there anything else that you would like to touch on before we wrap this up? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm excited mm -hmm. about my new role. You know, it's never too late to do something new. Right. Never too late, and so I'm really looking forward to making a difference here in the legislature, and I look forward to working with everyone right. who's a part of this institution. Senator, thank you for joining us on Legit TV for True the Cheer. It has been a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. I appreciate it.